Welcome back everyone and it's time to go BOSLY! And we all know this chapter of My Hero Academia was... FIRE! Oh my god! Uh, oh my god! FIRE! Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure everyone? What's the procedure? Stay f***ing calm! Stay f***ing calm! Stay f***ing calm! Stay f***ing And let's address the elephant in the room. Bakugo confessed to Deku? Chapter 322 involves the moment we were all waiting for. No, 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 it's not a ship. Why do you guys ship every little thing with Deku? I mean, you degenerates even said Minata. Minata. Confessed feelings to Deku in chapter 321. Like, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're kidding. It's just a joke. But Bakugo confessing his brotherly love and respect for Deku was definitely the growth and redemption we needed for both of them. In our opinion, this is easily one of the best rivalries we have seen in Shonen. Being held in high regard with the likes of Goku and Vegeta, Naruto and Sasuke, so on and so forth. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss. My Hero Academia Chapter 322 starts starts with Deku's inner thoughts thinking about letting go of his friends, wanting to isolate himself even further, but he can't muster up any strength due to his fatigue. Ida grabs his hand and Deku starts to cry as usual since, you know, that's his hidden quirk all along guys, you just didn't know. <coughs> And then his girlfriend, Uradaka, releases her powers so they fall from the sky. And yeah, I'm gonna call girlfriend Uradaka because I, I'm just saying, did you see the end of this chapter? Uradaka may be confessing her feelings next week and this will be thematically great and, uh, oh wait, I'm gonna on a tangent bit. Yeah, if you wanna fight me, fight me in the comment section below. As they descend, Kirishima comes to the rescue and catches them both. He explains that he remembers Deku being on the news before they all even knew each other. It was about a boy who tried to save his friend even though he was quirkless in chapter 1, remember? He states to Deku that being a hero has nothing to do with being special or strong and that his attitude from back then is what was key all along for what is happening right now. Now, if you had the notification bell on for the channel, you would know exactly what this statement means since, you know, bold deep prediction quirk has been coming true week after week with these freaking bangers on top of banging chapters. Come on guys, you have to hit the like button and the notification bell because it's the only only way we will be on the same page as a community. Okay, before I go any further, I must tell you about a special offer. Nani? Right now, Crunchyroll are currently giving away a free 14-day trial of Crunchyroll Premium to anyone that signs up at crunchyroll.com slash animeballsd. This doesn't cost you anything. And if you haven't checked out Crunchyroll since its significant update, you are truly missing out. What do you mean by that? Crunchyroll has updated its app on mobile where you can download anime offline and everything is much more pleasant to use to give you a better experience. Imagine watching anime on the train offline where there's no signal. Oh my god! Signing up means no ads, no pop-ups, no fake subtitles, you save time and there's no bullshit. Bully, moly. Admit it, those pop-ups and captures on illegal sites, they annoy all of us. I sure as heck don't miss them since I have Crunchyroll. It's even more important that you have access to your favorite anime on multiple devices such as mobile, PS4, PS5, tablet, PC in full HD. Crunchyroll has episodes only after an hour after they aired in Japan with English translations. A few anime that I personally recommend would be big names such as Tokyo Revengers, To Your Eternity, Black Clover and Jujutsu Kaisen. So sign up at crunchyroll.com slash animeballsd with the link in the description for a free trial that will give you access to all your anime needs all of our analysis is coming true, where the central theme of My Hero Academia's story is meant to represent the idea that there is a hero in all of us depending on your selfless nature and what you do with the responsibilities you behold as a human living in a society. This is how Horikoshi is inspiring the characters in the story and us the readers. This is because a hero could be a doctor that saves someone's life. A hero could be your mother that nurtured you into becoming the person you dreamt of. A hero could be someone donating money to those in need, saving them from hunger. Which goes back to the storytelling of My Hero Academia. That absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's about the power you hold with that power
power that you possess. The power that someone possess doesn't necessarily mean that they will become successful in a positive manner. But it's about their actions, selfless nature and responsibility they hold within their capabilities. A doctor, a mother or a rich person don't have superpowers but they can still make a difference based upon their actions to ripple through society to make it better. We see this perpetuated with Kirishima's words as the world witnessing Deku saving Bakugo that day rippled in all of them to become the best that they can be. Deku didn't have the power but he held a high responsibility in wanting to save those in need. This caused him to receive his destiny in the first place where All Might decided then and there for him to receive the one for all quirk. His one action of saving Bakugo rippled to the others to join UA and eventually come full circle to save him in the end as even heroes need to be saved by others aligned with their ideology. Essentially no one in this world is perfect. A hero cannot be perfect all the time. So by Deku going through these emotions it only proves how human he is and how caring he could be. Deku wants to protect the others by isolating himself. Think about it. If his nature was evil like all for one he would be greedy with the power he gained and all these six quirks. He would be warped like all for one and call them weak which Deku almost did this mistake in chapter 321 where he said none of them can keep up. Deku realizes his mistake in chapter 322 as he cannot judge others based upon selfish desires. Rather they should be judged on their ideals, actions and responsibility much like how Deku was in chapter 1 when he was quirkless trying to save Bakugo. As Bakugo stands before Deku, he tries to make him remember. Remember the time Bakugo jumped in to save him in the fight with Shigaraki during the war? He told him to quit trying to win on his own. So of course, as Deku says, he doesn't remember any of these words. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Which is clear because if he did remember and understood his own words, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing right now as he is still trying to win the fight alone. Which shows us that the current Deku we see now has been brewing for a lot longer than maybe we initially realized. Bakugo proclaims how he always felt that he looked down on Deku because he was quirkless but despite him always being so far behind Bakugo he felt that Deku was actually miles ahead of him and he hated that. This is what caused Bakugo to gradually push Deku further and further away which we actually have been seeing as the series progresses. By looking at these three panels here from chapter 9, 117 and 275 all from the same flashback back but at different times in the series. We can actually see that Bakugo and Deku have been getting further and further apart from each other and that's representative of how Bakugo has been feeling. Horikoshi even symbolically shows Bakugo's growth and maturity as a character as they both age through his confession regarding how he felt about Deku and being jealous. But now Bakugo accepted that even after joining UA he had lost to Deku and that he was trying to figure out his strengths and weaknesses spending days trying to break them down. And that's when Bakugo apologizes to Izuku actually referring him by his first name for the first time in the bloody series. This is a magnificent moment because up until now he has always called him Deku which Bakugo has always used as an abbreviation of Deku Nobu which means good for nothing. And yeah I butchered the pronunciation you guys know. Oh whoa Adil he is terrible at Japanese. Yeah I get it. Roast me if you want to. I am shit. But now with Bakugo referring to him by his first name Izuku instead of Deku he has come to accept that he is not a good for nothing and in fact a friend. And we know that Bakugo has accepted him as he called him Izuku and not Midoriya like most of his other classmates and colleagues do and this is because in Japan it is a sign that you are very close to the other person should you refer to them by their first name. Bakugo tells Deku how his actions were not misguided at all and they are the same that All Might did. But as we the readers know All Might's actions as heroic as they may seem were not the correct actions to take as he ended up committing to the role as the symbol of peace alone instead of as a collective with all the support that he had which ultimately ended his early downfall and a subsequent rise in villainous activity. As Bakugo states ideals can only take you so far as much as Deku wants the perfect world and society he dreams of and as much as he wants 
wants to do it by protecting every single person he can be shouldering the burden alone this is not a realistic option and he needs others around him Bakugo even says this to Deku that for him to surpass All Might they must protect civilians at UA together as a collective Deku then comes to terms with the mistakes he has made and apologizes for his comments about them not being able to keep up as Deku realizes that everyone was actually already way ahead of him as they were all right all along they know what being a hero is and the selfish path Deku was walking down is not the path to take to become a true symbol of peace Deku now understands the reasons behind his idealistic attitude from before rather than just seeing All Might on the TV and wanting to be like him Deku is stating that they are ahead of him in terms of mentality not drip not drip class 1a understands that he needs their help to reform society to avoid the previous mistakes the last generation made and of course as the journey Deku has been on lately it totally parallels Bakugo and his apology resonates with him with Bakugo saying that he understands that Deku didn't mean what he said because Bakugo himself now feels the same way about what he had said to Deku during their childhood with their relationship now coming full circle Yusuf will now be discussing these developments even further so that you can understand it as well as the rest of the chapter take it away <laughs> Thank you Ardol. So as we mentioned time and time again, Bakugo is literally the perfect person to help Deku see the light as we are seeing right now. Deku in a way started losing his true self which inspired those around him. However, this inspirational character of Deku already left its mark on his friends. That piece of Deku lived on through them with Bakugo holding the biggest chunk of it. Now I'm saying this not because Bakugo and Deku had had the longest past together but because of the impact Deku had on Bakugo's life. In the beginning of Bakugo's journey, he went about doing things all alone and saw depending on others as a weakness. Being a child prodigy and praised by his born talent fueled this mindset, as mentioned by his mother back in previous chapters. To Bakugo, strength equated worthiness, going back to dubbing Izuku as Deku, something that could mean worthless, which Deku kind of did represent due to not having any quirk, and he is pretty much the embodiment of what it means to be weak during the first interaction. However, at that time, what pushed Bakugo away from Deku even more? was his insecurities of seeing Deku who doesn't have a quirk still act like a hero and once Bakugo witnessed Deku's sudden growth realizing he was always ahead of him even though he didn't always have strength everything that he believed in was questioned this actually brought out all that insecurity that Bakugo had and like Deku is doing now he continued to push people further away out of fear and that fear was him accepting that true raw strength and power is not what represents a true hero rather is what inside and the willingness to save someone else even though you have no power. However, the key moment that pushed Bakugo to change was when he was kidnapped by the League of Villains, feeling worthless himself as he needed saving by his classmates. All Might was also forced to fight all for one where it became the end of his career as a pro hero. This left a heavy burden on his shoulder. Bakugo confronted Deku fighting him to settle this feeling but in the end he had to accept his own weaknesses. In a way, Bakugo needed saving in more ways than one. Ultimately, he was was able to grow from this with the help of Deku. So coming back to the chapter as Deku falls onto Bakugo's arms everyone is seen relieved as they have cleared the first hurdle of mission to save Deku. Unaraka then comes into focus agreeing that it will only get harder from now. We cut a few moments into the future inside UA as Deku is finally opening his eyes. Let's not forget that this boy was going on a non-stop hero crime fighting spree like look at his clothes guys remember I told you it stinks like it must smell like onion are sighing all that sweat and possibly even urine like I'm pretty sure that Deku did not take a toilet break come on man let's be real look at his clothes all that dirty and shit honestly our boy down his drip dirty <laughs> Oh, you nasty anyway guys 13 informs us that pretty much all civilians have moved into the evacuation centers the only ones remaining are the anti-hero vigilantes who don't trust the government or the heroes and why does that feel like real life in fact it mirrors quite well with all these vaccine passports and whatnot but honestly this is kind of like real life Horikoshi is clearly looking at real world events and is implementing whack jobs into my hero's world where those who don't trust the plans that are authority comes up with but can we really blame them with how society is run nowadays obviously we woke out here and we ain't saying it's bad to question authority or having critical thinking skills if the evidence is there but coming out with stupid ass theories that someone is illuminati for doing triangle science is pretty dumb <laughs> I 
friends telling me anime is the jolly Illuminati. Now look at this guys, I <laughs> Hey yo, I ain't taking a piss. Stay woke, keep your tin hats on. Alright guys, let's go back to the chapter. Something interesting 13 mentions is that there seems to be a violent extremist who has teamed up alongside the prison escapees and is running rampant. More and more vigilantes are entering the evacuation center due to this exhaustion. Even the extremists are easy to catch as they work in groups. Thus, things are going well for the hero side. It seems people of the My Hero world are adapting to the current situation. Everyone is doing their best to improve things. 13 even commends Deku for helping the police and heroes so much with his solo journey. We then cut to Deku and the classmates as they are showing off the security UA has now. You know, I ain't gonna lie, it even impressed me. It honestly looks like UA has been turned into his own fortified mega prison like Tartarus. Deku however hasn't fully recovered yet. Physically he seems fine, but mentally he still has his droopy ass eyes concerned about him not meeting everyone's expectation. There is a lot banging on the door as a swarm of civilians who are staying inside UA as it is one of the evacuation centers are lined up telling him not to come there. They are afraid that Shigaraki will attack UA in pursuit of Deku and then they will end up hurt in the crossfire. They literally call him a ticking time bomb and honestly that's what Deku was thinking as well. So in a way they ain't wrong. People are angry because they were promised safety. That's why they left their houses. As mentioned earlier the vigilantes who are anti-heroes have also started coming to evacuation centers and it's likely them who are causing most of the rockets. They ask Deku to be hidden somewhere else, not in UA. Deku hearing all of this gets even more depressed and as he's about to walk off thinking you know what maybe they're right. I don't belong here. For him at this point is either him as a hero but people not wanting him or him being a hero but he looks like a villain. Our boy can't get a break. However his wifey Uraraka holds his hands and causes Deku to finally open his eyes wide. She says that Ida, Bakugo and everyone made Deku come back and they won't let go of him that easily. So he shouldn't worry about what these people think. At the end of the day Deku is the final weapon that the heroes have to counter Shigaraki and all for one wit. This is all highlighted with Oradaka's final thoughts of who will save the heroes when they are in trouble too. After all, even though Deku is a hero, he is a human as well, who requires help and saving just like everyone else. In his case is the mental support. They can't just let Deku go on his downward spiral. And plus, when Deku gets back in shape mentally that is, they will also need his help just in case Yue gets attacked in the first place. Just imagine Deku's away and then Yue gets attacked. All of his concern would be useless because the very thing he was afraid of actually happened but at least him being there he can do something about it. When it comes to predicting other people's actions you can't predict it, don't predict it. In fact just always take the safest route. Deku being there to protect the UA facility seemed like the most logical course of action to me. Anyways the next chapter more than likely will be Uraraka's full on confession to Deku. Okay okay maybe not full on love confession but something definitely along that line as she had admitted she had something to tell him as well but didn't have any opportunities. It seems like it's something more private you know maybe a confessions or feelings. I don't know. But if Uraraka did tell Deku she loves him, he would never leave their side again. Anyway guys, that's it for this chapter. I hope you all enjoyed it. I did for sure. The Deku Bakugo moment was 10 out of 10. It did make me cry a little bit of tears in my eyes. If this chapter also affected you guys like it did me, then make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and ding the notification bell to stay updated with all our other content because we will continue going balls deep into My Hero Academia. Till then guys, catch you next time.